Right, so a few days ago, I uploaded the first episode of a mini-series that I'm doing on this channel to end the year. I'm basically doing some 2023 recaps on the biggest topics that we covered throughout the year, kind of going through effing as it happened. A lot of the stuff that happened earlier in the year is quite hard to remember, especially when a situation is so big, it's been dragged out throughout the year, there's so much information, you kind of forget how it actually started. Now, in the first episode, we did a 2023 recap on eight passengers and that whole situation regarding the arrest and even before the arrest. And I also mentioned in that video that I'm going to leave a poll in the description for you guys to vote on which topic you want to see next. Now, as you can see here, we've got a total of 1,781 votes, and the winner of the poll, unsurprisingly, I'll be honest, is Illuminati. 574 votes. It actually wasn't really close at all, so that is what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into that, it's worth mentioning that I don't know what the next episode of this mini-series is going to be, because Sniper Wolf and David Dobrik slash Jeff Wick are currently only four votes apart, and even TikTok Psychic isn't that far apart, really. So what I'm actually going to do is create a whole new poll. So I'm going to take Illuminati out of the options, obviously, and then just keep the same options that are here now, so the people who did vote Illuminati before can vote for the next one. And whichever one wins, that's going to be the video we do. So if you do want to vote on what the next topic is going to be, that's the place to do it. Description slash pinned comment. So yeah, as I mentioned, today's video is going to be about Illuminati slash Illuminati. I mean, I've made about 37 videos on this woman. Still don't know how to pronounce her name. She's called Blair, so we'll probably call her Blair throughout this, but my first video on Blair was actually six months ago, and in hindsight, the intro of this video is quite funny. So recently on the Marky channel, we've been looking at some of the worst people on the internet, you know, some really disgusting situations. So today, I thought we could take a little break from that, you know, we're not gonna be talking about any criminals or like the YouTube pranksters who are pranking the homeless. We're actually just gonna be looking at one of the most petty situations instead. Yeah, so the reason why I found this funny is because when I first started covering this topic, I thought it was just gonna be like a petty little YouTube drama because she claimed someone copied her editing style when they didn't. And as I just kind of insinuated there, this drama isn't that deep. It's just a bit petty, you know? She's not really like one of these horrible people that we covered in the past. Ah, uh, that could be, uh, slightly wrong. <laughs> Obviously, at the time of recording this video, there was a lot of information that we weren't aware of, so it is funny that that was kind of my first opinion. But yeah, let's actually go through the information we were aware of at the time. So this is the tweet that started everything. It's Illuminati saying, not at Legal Eagle editors broaching my editors to take my video style, and when they didn't give up the info, they literally copied it. And by the way, I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. Just changed the colour from purple to blue, huh? Interesting. Now Blair does go on to show a screenshot from an email that was sent to Blair's editors from Legal Eagle editors, basically asking about an effect and how you do it. Hey, Hey Blair, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle, and I was wondering if there were some After Effects plugins you guys use for things like the intro in the first NFL video, where the lighter colours appear to stick out in 3D. We could recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about, just so you know what I mean. One of the most normal messages you will ever see between two editors. Especially on effects that aren't that unique, it's stuff that people have been doing for a long time, and sometimes as an editor, you might see someone else's video, like the effect, but you're not quite sure on how to do it yourself, or you think that probably is a better method than what you're thinking in your head. So it would be very normal in that scenario to reach out to said editor and ask like for some advice. Very normal. It's like if you were at the, the skate park, and I'm gonna do one of my stupid analogies again, but it's like if you were at a skate park and then you saw someone doing like a tail whip, yeah? A trick where the bike spins around, you land on it, very cool. And you're not sure how to do the tail whip, so you ask for some advice, and then that guy gets really fucking angry, acting as if he created a tail whip in the first place. It just wouldn't happen if you see someone doing something that you're not completely aware of how to do yourself. It's quite normal to ask. But as we heard, Bled doesn't hold this opinion, and in fact, she goes on to say that Legal Eagle just copied some of her effects anyways. This was example A, which was a, a paper tearing effect, which, I mean, I've got to say before this, I'd never seen before. And example B here was a highlighter effect, one of the most common editing effects that you will see on videos on a day-to-day -day basis. And let's just say, in an imaginary world, Blair was the first person to use these effects, which obviously she wasn't. Still in that scenario, if someone used that effect because they thought it was good, take it as a compliment. You don't need to call them out and try and like claim that they're plagiarizing your videos for literally no reason, especially when it's something as simple as just an effect, all right? It's very, very petty. And the most mental thing about this, as we know in hindsight, Blair's career is completely ruined. If we look at the views that she's getting now compared to what she was getting like a year ago, six months ago, just before this drama in general, it's dropped off 
massively. And even if we're just ignoring the views, her reputation is completely ruined, isn't it? I mean, out of the 1.3 million people that are subscribed to her now, I mean, it was like 1.9 at one point. But out of that 1.3 million people, it seems like there's not that many that really trust her. She's getting about 15,000 views a video right now. And if I had a guess, she's getting about 100 positive comments, or at least 100 comments that aren't negative and are just talking about the topic. Still great numbers, right? 15,000 people in a room, it would be a ridiculous amount of people, right? It'd be so overwhelming, but compared to where she was, it's very, very low. And even though we know this now, we know Blair's career is completely ruined from her actions, it did actually start from her having a fragile ego and accusing someone of copying her videos when they didn't. Like, that's where it started. If she didn't tweet this, who knows? We might not have heard any of this drama. I mean, it is a good thing in hindsight, right? Because we heard a lot of information that was kind of kept secret before, but she really could have avoided it. Now, Legal Eagle did actually respond to this saying, Danny is a great and thorough editor. When he reached out for your email, he was just hoping to find out what plugin your team used on a particular video. A very common practice among editors. He was not looking to copy anyone else's style. A very simple response. That's all it needed. It really shouldn't have been a big deal in the first place. It never should have been made like a public thing. I don't get it at all. But I mean, they stayed classy with their response when realistically, you would probably want to respond by saying, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> now, at this point, people started speaking out against Illuminati because people who were associated with Blair in the past were getting tweets saying, like, how can you be associated with someone like this? So they decided to set the record straight. Now, one of these people was actually The Click. The Click being someone who had a channel with Blair in the past, as well as a few of her creators called Sad Milk. So like I mentioned, he decided to set the record straight by saying this. Hey, you peeps, I have seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati and would like to clarify I'm not affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. I left her and a collaboration group Sad Milk due to similar behaviour as seen in recent events. Lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor anger management, to name a few. Eventually, I believe pretty much the whole group left her. The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour, I think, hard to know, screaming at me for an array of random things, calling me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me. She would turn friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you, so she had allies against you, rallying mainly banned problematic community members known to be liars and conflict seekers. Then the click went on to explain that Blair would go out of her way to try and cancelled the click over things that he said many many years ago when he didn't really speak English all that well. The click is actually Swedish, English being his second language, so there's a lot of old videos where he said words that he wouldn't use now and that you shouldn't be using. And he says he didn't know the meaning of these words. I can't say that for 100% fact, obviously, because I'm not the click, but that's what he says, and I mean, it is a fact that he's not English, right? He's Swedish. And he also mentioned that Blair tried gaining access to his Discord account without permission, and this is something that Blair has done on many different occasions. For example, there was a time with another YouTuber called Tommy C, who she was working with at the time, but she decided to stop working with him when she found out someone in a Tommy C video, not Tommy C, made a fat joke. Not against Blair, just a fat joke in general. So Blair messaged Tommy with the video clip and says, I think you know where this is going. It was great working with you, Tommy, but it is clear that we have grown in very different directions. I wish you nothing but the best for you, your news team, and your family. Tommy C says her, and then follows it up by saying, okay, I know now. Okay, fair enough. Honestly, thanks. I think all the best. It seems like they agreed to be civil with each other and they're just not going to be friends anymore. But this was until Illuminati realized that she actually had access to Tommy's account. Because if you didn't know, there's actually a feature on YouTube where you can allow someone to gain access to your account and you can set certain limits on what they can actually do to your account. This is mainly used with video editors so they can gain access to your account. All they can really do is upload the video to your account and change like the title and whatnot. And it means that they don't have to send you the video, then you upload them, they can just do it straight away themselves. They can't delete your channel or anything like that, they can't change your password, change any details really, they can just upload videos and whatnot, and also, uh, delete videos. And this is exactly what Blair did. Without Tommy's permission, she went on Tommy's channel because she had access to it and deleted every video that she appeared in just because she didn't want to be friends with Tommy anymore. Which I shouldn't have to tell you is mental behavior. And it really bothers me that I'm never going to get to see those videos again in order because not only are they drama news videos, we did skits and stuff in between them and we worked real hard and you know, I, I bought all the graphics and and, and and did all that stuff and I'm they're they're gone. They're they're never coming back. Yeah, just to delete someone's work like that, as he just said, he paid money for the graphics. He's obviously put a lot of effort into these videos and Blair just deleted them. 
for the sake of it without even asking. That is genuinely such a horrible thing to do, but it's probably like the most tame thing that she did that we're going to discuss in today's video. But there's just some more context of Blair liking the fact that she has power and she has access to certain accounts like Discord or like Tommy's YouTube channel. Now, a few other people had spoke out against Blair, like Wonderstruck, for example, who was also part of Sad Milk. He was working with them once upon a time. Now, we will get a lot more in depth with the Wonderstruck stuff, but first, I do just want to cover Blair's response video and specifically her response to the click. And then, like I said, we'll get to the Wonderstruck stuff. So Blair decides that the best thing she can do with this response, instead of just owning up and like saying that she was wrong and whatnot and then leaving it there, she will own up to certain things, but then straight away proving that that was a load of shit by making more false accusations. And this false accusation in particular is one where Blair claimed that the click allowed a in her Discord server, allowed the person to talk about the fact that they were a and the click just decided to let this go. Which in itself is a crazy, crazy accusation, but Blair says it with some confidence. The click and I had shared Discord moderators around the time of Sad Milk being created. Due to the click's inaction, our shared moderators had brought a situation in his server to my attention. A situation involving in Click's Discord, there was a 19-year-old bragging about a 12-year-old that he was claiming to be involved with. We used this individual's ID number and we banned them from the Sad Milk server and from my server, and we reported them to Discord's trust and safety team, who we hope did pursue this further. Then I went to contact Click to see what was going on, and it was mainly because I didn't want to believe that he would blow off someone clearly discussing such an inappropriate relationship. Yeah, an accusation that definitely could be career-ending, right? If people genuinely believe from Blair's video that the click was just okay with someone talking about that type of stuff in his Discord server, his reputation is done for. Now, the bit that Blair actually misses out about this whole story is whilst it was all going on, it was 3am, the click's time, and he was asleep. Meaning he had absolutely no idea that this situation was even happening in the Discord server. A very, very key detail in the story, don't you think? So here's one of the few tweets that the click posted after this video, kind of responding to it as he says, here, it was 3am, his time so, and he was asleep by the time he woke up, the individual was already banned. But it wasn't just a Twitter response we got from this, the click actually posted a video himself. But whilst we're still on the topic of Blair's response video, let's actually get to the stuff she said about Wonderstruck. Blair's section on Wonderstruck was so strange to say the least, right? This is someone that she's had private conversations with in the past. Very personal conversations that any normal person would realise I shouldn't be saying on a public YouTube video because they trusted me with this information. But Blair just clearly didn't care and she decided to just talk about Wonderstruck's personal life. During this time, he would often tell both Oz Media and myself how living in Austin, Texas was a nightmare for him. He would often complain about his room roommates being terrible people, his friends being mostly terrible people and unmotivated to do well in life, and how his car was always breaking down, and how his channel was not going in the direction he wanted. And then he talked about that last bit of family that he had moving away, and he was essentially alone. I won't speak on behalf of Oz, but I know I was moved by Wonder's story. Literally just rattling off information that she found out during a private conversation. I don't know how she ever thought that would make her look good. But it gets worse, because she carries on talking about this private information, whilst also saying, I'm not going to to talk about Wonderstruck's private information. Without going into personal details, I was pretty horrified by what he had explained happened in his past. I was saddened by how he constantly talked about how bad his life was and how he felt like a failure. He said he felt alone, depressed, and uncertain of the future. And at that point, I knew I wanted to help him in whatever way I could. Without going into personal details, I am now about to tell you all his personal details. Yet again, what a horrible thing to do. I feel like that is a sentence I could probably say after most of stuff that we've seen Blair do, but literally we are just getting started with all the information we end up finding out about Blair. This is someone that you were friends with at one point in your life, and he trusted you enough to tell you all this personal information about his mental health, saying how he was depressed and all this stuff, and you've took that information and used it against him in a response video on YouTube. Yet again, how on earth did she think she could say that in a public YouTube video and that would come across good? It's a very constant theme of Illuminati that she doesn't think she's done anything wrong and she's actually so delusional in the fact that she can't realise the shit that she's done to herself, the reason why her channel is failing now is because of her. She she generally thinks everyone's just working against her and there's some like big conspiracy theory or something against her and it's mental because when you start talking about the actions that she's done over the past few years, past few months, it becomes very obvious why people would turn against you. Now as well as just telling the world Wonderstruck's personal details, she also goes on to make some other 
her accusations. She actually says that she had to fire Wonderstruck because he missed a deadline. Wonderstruck actually proves that wrong with receipts. I continued his pay even though no work had ever been completed. Although there was only a minuscule amount of work for Wonder to do, he still managed to act up within company spaces. He made inappropriate comments on forms that were visible to other employees, he didn't complete tasks that were assigned to him, and he failed to follow company protocol. Okay, so there was a couple of accusations there. First one is the deadline. Wonderstruck goes on to show that he was actually fired on July 30th, 2021. And then as we can see by this screenshot, his deadline wasn't until August 2nd. Now, Blair also mentioned in that clip that Wunderstruck said an inappropriate comment at some point that he shouldn't have said in a workplace. And now, obviously, being the curious people that we are, we would want to know what this inappropriate comment was. Now, according to Oz Media, another member of the Sad Milk channel, the inappropriate comment that he made was along the lines of saying, if I could be an animal for a day, I would be a furry. And your favourite food was arse. Definitely a comment that is worth getting fired over, isn't it? Yeah, as you'll notice, it becomes a very common theme that Blair will just miss out key bits of details, you know, with the whole Discord situation. She missed out the fact that the click was asleep. With this situation, she will say something along the lines of, oh, he said something really inappropriate, but then miss out what he actually said. It's a very, very common theme, as I just mentioned. Blair also went on to try and accuse Wonderstruck of being a bad dog owner, and the reason for this is because one time she found out that Wonderstruck's dog, like, shit all over the floor, which already seems like a bit of a weird situation to bring up a few years later. Like, it really isn't that deep. It's a dog at the end of the day. But yeah, I get how that could be annoying, right? It's in your home, the shit on the floor, Wonderstruck isn't cleaning up, how dare he? Now you've got to do it yourself. That would be annoying. But in actual reality, or according to Oz Media, it was already getting cleaned by the time that Oz Media and Illuminati actually found out about it. You know, Blair and I, of course, we weren't happy to see that initially, but when we had gone upstairs, you were already cleaning up the mess. And now the last thing I wanted to mention in Blair's response video is that she tries to come across as just like a caring person, you know? When she was mentioning Wonderstruck's mental health, she was talking about how she just wanted to be there for him and that his story was touching her and all this stuff, right? Even though she did just choose to leak a personal conversation, but she tries to show emotion through this, you know, getting sad about certain situations, just trying to show that she cares. And this is something that Osmeda says that Blair would do a lot. She has been known to like fake cry on demand. I've like watched her build those tears up on multiple occasions, whether it's she forgot she had a prior engagement. So she built up tears and said, I have to take Casper to the vet and I'm very scared so I won't be able to make it. Or for talking to other um, like content creators that she's had issues with of welling up those tears for like apologies, for talking with employees, for talking with uh, me or her roommates. It's something that I have watched her do on numerous occasions. If they were genuine, I mean, there's that, but I have a really hard time believing it with how many times I've actually seen her build those tears up. And yeah, yet again, that is something that I obviously can't prove. I don't know Blair personally, but with all the other stuff that we've heard about Blair, it's very hard to kind of believe anything she says at this point. Oh, and also, Bailey decided to say hello. I thought I'll give him his minute to shine, you know, because there's always a few people in the comments who seem to like the fact that he's here. As you can see, he's kind of bald at the minute. Um, he's had his hair cut and it's went very, very short. Oh, are you tired? You all right? It's not boring, yeah? But yeah, to you people who always ask for Bailey, this is for you. <laughs> okay, so now let's get back to the click stuff because obviously we got the click's initial response with the tweets. It was very brief, but then we actually got a full video from the click where he drops there uh, a few bombshells. Okay, so he starts off with the whole Discord situation. We've been through it. You kind of get where his point was. He was asleep. It's a pretty good excuse. But one thing I do find interesting from his response that we haven't mentioned yet is that he actually shows a conversation between him and Blair at the time of all of this happening. And when the click does wake up and he responds to the situation that's happened once he's aware of it, she actually replies to him saying, I'm proud proud of you. So at the time, she was proud of the way that he dealt with the situation, but then a few years later, when they're no longer friends, she's not proud of him anymore, and in fact thinks that he likes people talking about paedophilia. Makes sense. But once he covers the Discord situation, he goes on to respond to Blair's claim that she actually restored his channel, got his channel back after it was wrongly terminated, and he says that it didn't really have anything to do with Blair. I guess, yeah, she tweeted about it, but my network that I pay actually got the channel back. My channel was restored by the help of my network, which is a service I pay for. She might have tagged YouTube on Twitter or chatted with support, and I appreciate my friends who had my back throughout all this. I even thanked them in my return video, her included. Here it is. But the fact remains, she wasn't the one who saved my channel. If you want to get into specifics, Oz and Salty are the ones who networked me with this network initially. Which is very funny because yet again, it is Blair trying to come across as a hero here, always talking about how she helped people in these scenarios, and the fact that they're talking about her now is just their way of backstabbing her, right? But most of the things that she's took credit for, when you actually add context to them, 
isn't stuff that she can really take credit for in the first place. Now this next part is where we start seeing the manipulation that Blair would use to try and turn viewers and just people in general against the other Sad Milk members once the group split up. As we can see here, we have a tweet from Sad Milk talking about the fact that Salty, OT and the Click will not be continuing with this journey, unfortunately. There's some creative differences, so on, so on. So at this point, the channel is split up. It's been announced on Twitter, but just a few hours later, I think it was three hours later specifically, Blair actually went to Twitter to tweet this. Casual reminder, paedophilia is never a grey area. It's wrong. If someone you know won't take action, then they are complicit to the problem. MAPs aren't part of the community. Want to be involved romantically with children is not okay. Stop making excuses to sexualise kids. Now, obviously, that statement in itself is very correct, but it doesn't take a genius to realise who she was hinting at here. We've obviously just spoke about the whole Discord situation where she's trying to get people against the click already. And then just a couple of hours after the group has split up, she tweets this. I mean, it could just be a coincidence, I guess, but to me, it doesn't seem like it, especially with everything that we know about Blair now. And just in case you do think it was a coincidence, she actually went onto the Sad Milk Twitter account, or I imagine it was her who did it, and she retweeted the tweet. So this was probably like the next tweet after the fact that the group is split. All because the click was asleep when there was a disgusted individual in his Discord account, and by the time he woke up, they'd already been banned. I don't get it. This is also a time we would start seeing how Blair would just bash people and private messages on a Discord with her viewers and whatnot. Like, she always spoke shit about people on Discord. There's God knows how many messages that prove this. I mean, like this one here saying, Ah, this OT click shit has me heated. These stupid fucks. How could you not care about the people who care about your community the most? How? Here we have more messages where she's basically insinuating that the click's career should be destroyed and that she has the power to do so. I mean, someone said here, do y'all have plans with the click something shit? Because I know going public isn't great, but that is horrid. While I'm mostly the big bad bitch, some are figuring it out. Listen, I have the click on video saying the F slur and the R slur. He will put himself with his own ego, like I won't have to do any of that. He's gonna muddy his own hands and unravel it himself. Oh yeah, it's in one of his own videos. They are still live on his channel. And I mean, the more and more this video goes on, the more and more we talk about the situation, it is very clear that Blair loves to go out of a way to try and ruin everyone's career, but hers. It's not just the people that she used to do videos with, it's complete strangers as well, which we will get to. Here's Another conversation where she says that she will pay someone $200 to go through raw footage of the click and try and find him using slurs. This is actually something that we spoke about in our last video because the person she sent this message to, who was blurred out at the time when we saw this, has now actually came forward to talk about the fact that he is being sued by Blair. Now I was at this point covering the situation that I realised the type of person that Blair was. Up until now, I just thought she was really horrible to people in her life and she would say horrible things and go behind the back and make false accusations. All terrible stuff. But then we went as far to find out that Blair would make a fake alt account pretending to be a fan just to spread information about her ex-friends and try and ruin their career, but she would do it behind a fake alias so people didn't think it was her doing all this horrible stuff. So here we have messages from Blair saying, got click saying the n-word in a video apparently. Yikes, which one? Sends the link to the video. Oz and I are skimming through it right now. Apparently he says it's somewhere in here. Big yikes. 16 seconds, she puts a timestamp. The alt account is gonna love this. And then she goes on to show a draft that she was then gonna post on his alt account to try and ruin the click's career. I saw the sad milk announcement. I follow all the milkmen on their social media. Now I'm seeing the comments off the click, I'm assuming that went on to say. We can all agree it is obvious they did not end on good terms. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, so on. See, I was a big fan of the click. I thought his streams were a great way to interact with people like me. I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream, uh, basically, right, we get the point here, because it is cut off, so it's hard to follow along, but she is making a draft to post on a fake account. And she would post all the time. I'm talking on Reddit, on Twitter. The Twitter account is still up. We'll go through that in a second, but she tweeted a lot. Here's one of the Reddit posts here saying, I saw the sad milk announcement. I follow the milkmen on social media. It's the exact same post. And basically she goes on to reference the sad milk tweet saying that the end don't create differences and says it's dumb as fuck and then goes on to blame the click. And here we have another post, except this time it's over on Twitter, and it's by Juby Smurts again, and it says, I posted this on the Reddit, and soon after these videos went private, and a dumb non-apology was given instead by Click. You all need to explain why you would hide this if this is why he left at Sad Milk. You can't cover it up. And again, remember, this is Blair the whole time. And the Twitter account is still up. The bio says, I know the truth, which is ironic because we all know the truth behind this account. I imagine the reason she hasn't deleted the account is because if she does, I mean, that just guarantees the fact that she's guilty for this. Even though it is extremely, extremely likely from the information that we've been given that there is Blair behind this account, it would 100% confirm it if the account was deleted, wouldn't it? But I mean, I'm going to scroll down right now and you can see the fact throughout the year or however long that this account was going, she would reply to everybody's tweets, like from the Sad Milk account, basically saying like, oh, talk about this. 
this is the click saying this, you've got to talk about this, why wouldn't you talk about it? Just trying to pressure people into talking about it. And she would respond to everyone, as we can see. There's a ridiculous amount of tweets. And also a bit of information I think is worth saying is that Blair hasn't denied using this account. I mean, there's DMs from her on Discord talk about making this draft for the account. People have found the accounts with the exact same message that she drafted out. It is definitely her, but she also hasn't denied it. So what does that say? But this is where like a new character falls into the story and it's actually Cruel World Happy Mind. A person who is a very good YouTuber and has a ridiculous amount of subscribers now, a very big audience that love her videos. But whilst this drama that we're about to talk about was happening, she was a lot smaller and Blair was a massive YouTuber who no one had a bad word to say about. She was well respected in the community. And Blair and Cruel Crew World's Happy Mind, or Madison, as I'm going to call her in this video, that's a real name, had a bit of drama. And as you can imagine, with Blair being a massive YouTuber who's well respected, and Madison not being a massive YouTuber, it's not exactly going to be a good situation for Madison. She's going to get a lot of hate regardless. But the situation started because Blair and Madison were creating very similar types of content at the time, and Blair uploaded a video that seems like it was just copied from Madison's content. So Madison reached out to Blair in honestly one of the nicest messages I've ever seen. She just says, Look, I mean, I've came across like your video, I do like your content content but it seems really similar to mine and like you didn't credit me so I'm just confused what's going on here I could be wrong but can we speak about it but even though this message was really nice Blair did not like the fact that Madison called her out rightfully so because Blair copied her content which is ironic because you know Blair wasn't happy about someone using the same effect as her but Blair was so pissed off about the situation that she decided to take this message that was private it didn't have to be public drama and decided to make a public drama something I recently learned apparently is there is this whole uh anti-MLM community, mm. right? I kind of thought I was on my own little island doing my <laughs> own thing. Maybe that's my own ego. Yeah. So I purposely um, like have terms like that blocked from my YouTube mm, yeah. search and that kind of stuff can't influence me. Yeah, so as you heard, she first of all claims that she doesn't watch any MLM content so she couldn't have copied the video. Just more lies. I mean, it's Blair lying, not exactly a shock. I'm going to try and keep it vague so I don't mention this person's channel but uh it's a it's a very small youtuber and i mean just listen to the way she says that like she's talking about a situation and she's almost like fed up with it because it's someone that she shouldn't even put her energy into talking about just this really small youtuber you know a little fucking peasant in the youtube world her ego was very apparent even at this point so she messages me and she goes i'm just really disappointed because you're someone i look up to and you copied my video and i want credit yep so as you just heard she just took a really nice message and tried to make it sound as aggressive as possible so i went to my moderators in my discord server and i was like hey um i screenshotted the message i sent it to them and i said do you know is this a youtuber can you guys like tell me who this is or what they're even yeah. talking about because i had no idea again just a bunch of lies like imagine this right someone has reached out to blair and has said look i think you're copying my video it's very very similar but says it in a very nice way but either way that's the general gist of it right as if her first response to that would be going to her discord and saying does anyone know if this is actually a YouTuber, by the way, and waiting for a response from them? When you could just simply click on the person's account who's like, you know, messaged you, and then go to a channel and find out if she's really a YouTuber? Obviously, your first response would be clicking the account and seeing the video. If you were innocent in this case, right, and you're like, oh, what the fuck, I haven't copied, what's going on here? You would click the account and find the video and see what the similarities are. You wouldn't go to your Discord and be like, guys, is this really a YouTuber? Am I being pranked right now? Just another clear example of Blair being a complete liar. This is something that she's done for years. Now at this point, Madison actually responds to this video and remember this is a few years ago when Madison was a lot smaller than Blair. I never accused, straight up accused this creator, this larger creator of copying me. On top of that, something I didn't mention in that video and that this creator seems to conveniently also leave out of this whole story. At the time that people were messaging me this, there were no sources on this person's video. The only thing it had in the description was in parentheses, sources coming soon, which is why I think a lot of people assumed that they copied me and didn't give me credit or whatever. I watched the video and while a lot of similar things were said, coincidences do happen when you're researching for something, you can stumble across similar sources. I've made similar points that other YouTubers have made on a topic unknowingly because sometimes that's just how people's minds work. And even now when she's making this response video, she's been very nice. She's given the benefit of the doubt, but she has just seen this massive YouTuber 
claiming that she was lying about her this whole time and whatnot. Blair was claiming that she didn't even know who Madison was, so obviously she has the right to defend herself here. But again, Blair seems to have a problem with the fact that Madison's being really nice about her, apparently, and she started going to Twitter and saying like, oh, I'm going to be doing like a live stream going in on Madison, I'm going to be doing a debunk stream, and then even hinted at the fact she was going to do a few videos on Madison and whatnot, like she was going to respond to this like very heavily. But these streams actually never happened, and in fact Blair ends up tweeting out that she just got off the phone with Madison, and they spoke about it and have agreed that both of them were wrong in certain points and whatnot. But one part of this statement that is very interesting is that she says, she will be removing her part about me in a video she recently did. In return, I will not be doing the planned live stream on her. Which to me, at the time of making this video, did seem a bit weird. It seemed like she was manipulating Madison, like by using the fact that she's a bigger channel and saying, look, if you delete that stuff you said about me, I won't do the live stream and try and ruin your career. It seemed like she was blackmailing her, but this was all the proof we really had at the time, so it was kind of hard to say. Maybe she worded it wrong, but as we get later on in this video, we'll find out that it does seem like this is exactly what she was trying to do. But yeah, even though this situation was a few years old at this point, this is when people started like bringing it back to light and kind of talking about it again. And using the fact that we now know this information about Blair to add context to what was happening a few years ago to realize, oh, okay, she's been doing this for a long time. And there was just more and more information piling up against Blair to the point where she responded again and kind of for the last time, or at least publicly. Hey everyone, I am fully aware of the recent false allegations that have surfaced. I want to take a moment to publicly state that I'm taking these allegations seriously and I'm committed to rectifying the situation promptly and appropriately. I understand the concerns and potential impact that these false allegations have caused. My team and I are actively working behind the scenes to gather all relevant facts. I am committed to transparency and accountability throughout this process. And yeah, it's worth mentioning that it has been five months since these tweets and she has done nothing of what she said, especially taking accountability. Rest assured that I'm taking a decisive action to address this situation. I will provide updates and communicate any necessary actions as soon as possible. Again, this is something she hasn't done in five months. Thank you to those who are standing by me during this challenging time. I will not allow these false allegations to be weaponized as a way to silence my voice. Now, isn't that ironic? <laughs> I know we haven't spoke too much about the lawsuits just yet, but I imagine a lot of you are already aware of them. The fact that she had the cheek to say that she will not allow her voice to be silenced when she knew fine well that she was gonna be sending cease and desist left, right, and center and threatening legal action to everybody she possibly could is laughable. I appreciate your patience and understanding during this challenging time. I am dedicated to upholding my channel's values and delivering on our commitments. I am confident that the truth will prevail. Sincerely, Blair Zon. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the truth has prevailed, but definitely not in the way that Blair was hoping. So yeah, at this point in the very confusing story, Blair has just announced that she will not allow people to silence her voice, which is ironic for many reasons. She also hasn't spoke about it publicly since then, so it seems like she has kind of silenced herself. But literally, my next video, after talking about Blair's most recent statement, was mentioning the fact that she is now setting cease and desists. Here we have a tweet from Wonderstruck saying, Blair, aka Illuminati, he just sent me a cease and desist for speaking out against her abuse. I will not be silenced. And because of this, Wonderstruck actually made a GoFundMe to help with the legal fees. And as we can see at the time of recording this video, he has currently raised over $20,000. And surely that should be a clear sign to Illuminati that Wonderstruck is the one in the right ear, the fact that so many people are publicly supporting him. Like, you would think that that would be the thought process, but apparently not. In the description of this GoFundMe, we do get more information. He says, roughly a month had passed without an update on the situation. That was until three days ago when I received a cease and desist this letter demanding that legal action would be taken against me if I did not remove my response in Twitter threads. To do so would be a disservice to myself and every other voice that has come forward during the situation. As many of you are aware, a cease and desist letter is a legal matter, which means the situation has grown exponentially, and I intend to fight. Legal fees come with expenses, expenses I'm willing to pay to have my voice heard, along with others who have spoken out. And yeah, he goes on to explain that the donations would be going towards the legal fees. But Blair was not done yet with the cease and desist, because my very next video was talking about the fact that Oz Media also received a cease and desist. So Illuminati has officially sent me a cease and desist. Best part is she cites parts of a video which I had no part in and demands I make a public apology. I haven't even made a video yet, which at this time he hadn't. He has now, which we will cover, but he hadn't even released a video and he'd already got sent a cease and desist. This is how desperate Illuminati was to try and silence people after saying that she will not be silenced, by the way. It seems like she was just worried that the truth will finally come out. That's what that seems like to me. Now, the whole legal matter between Osmedium Blair does actually eventually get a lot worse, but 
as we're going in chronological order, something happens between then before it gets worse, and that is the fact that one topic actually released a video. So yet again, this is another person who has had personal experience with Blair and is speaking out against Blair. I mean, the amount of people that have spoke out against her is very worrying at this point, isn't it? But he does start off the video by defending the click with the whole Discord situation. The retelling of how our group conversation went and using it as a way to frame the situation as click not actioning soon enough or responding timely is simply a lie. The one-on-one -on -one call was more to check in on, do you think he would support this person's behavior? And I said, no, <laughs> but that we should really be talking to him directly about this. Illuminati sounded pretty upset during our one-on-one -on -one call and I wanted to be there for my friend, but I know without a doubt that Click would not support that person's behavior. And one topic also goes on to talk about these alt accounts that Blair was running and now looking back at them in hindsight knowing that it was Blair, it's sad for him because he realized that Blair was just trying to ruin his friendship with the Click. There were specific portions of the posts on Reddit from the troll account that stood out to me, an intentional phrasing to drive a wedge between Click and I. And one topic is friends with someone while pretending to be wholesome and good. Oh, I think one off, topic man. is a liar and a sham and has been pandering to our community if he stays friends with someone like this. Again, just showing the manipulation that Blair was willing to use, like genuinely disgusting behavior. Like how cowardly is that? Hiding behind a fake account to try and ruin a friendship between two people and saying that they shouldn't be friends with each other. Uh, like it's genuinely just evil behavior. He then also goes on to mention the type of person that he believes Blair to be. I'm not convinced the person who did this did not intend real world harm to us. The only kind of person who could slander their friends like this is someone who is darkly unremarkable. But then after one topics video release, we then got a video from Swoop, who made an incredible video talking about Illuminati. And during this video, I actually saw some content from Blair's ex years before we kind of realized the type of person Blair was. And he was saying all of this stuff from the start. He outpaced by another channel. The others were merely nipping at her heels or falling behind. But r slash, well, he was rocketing past. And her statements regarding his content were even more scathing. Eventually, she utilized information and statistics provided by a larger YouTuber to create the video that many still remember. A video taken down not because she believed she was wrong ever, but taken down because she saw it negatively affecting her subscriber count. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, she likes to try and just take down people's channels for whatever reason. And it's not just the people around her, it's people she sees as competition. There was a Reddit account called r slash. She saw it as competition, so decided to spread like rumors saying that they were sub and whatnot. She would even go as far to harass the mods of people she didn't like. I forgot the specific drama, but Misery Box was another big Reddit YouTuber whom Blair had disliked because he was having comparable growth while putting out content she said was quote, shitty and derivative. I believe he was caught being a drunken D canoe and was ostracized. Tragically, she then threatened and harassed some of his former mods on Discord when they couldn't give her everything she wanted from the situation. And look, hearing this about anybody else, you'd probably sit and question it and think, ah, oh, like a normal person wouldn't do that. I'm sure there's gotta be more to the story. But it's Blair we're talking about. Like, that's actually not even that surprising. Blair's ex also shared a phone call that he had with Blair. And put all this effort into it, you just kind of shut me down. It just seemed- So it had nothing to do with no, the fact that I go, oh, I'm moving, I'm busy, I'm doing sh every single day. The only thing you had to ask me is, when are we collabing? When are we collabing? When are we collabing? And it's like, oh, you're treating me like a fan, Blair. And I'm like, well, perhaps you should have stopped acting like one. You want to say you don't attack me, but then you straight up cook and call me a liar over things that you are no 100% true. I'm done with it. I'm done with you. Because God knows why, because you're bitter about a breakup because your cash cow left you. Yeah, Blair clearly has a very, very big ego. I mean, that is very, very clear to see, isn't it? Now, at this point in Swoop's video, she's talking about her conversation with Blair's ex to find out more the like, details of what happened. And she mentions this, which is fucking incredibly sad. Azothan claimed that, quote, Blair and I had a phone call where she had told me that I was beneath her, that I was always going to be mediocre, and that she was better than that. And let me tell you what might be the most awful, heartbreaking thing Azothan shared with me. Uh, what he just said, you know, that Blair told him he was beneath her and mediocre. Here's why she used those specific words. Quote, about her calling me mediocre and a burden. Those words were the exact ones I used five months before when I attempted to end my life. Yeah, so according to Azafan, Blair's ex, he believes that she would use these words against him because they were the words he said five months ago when, you know, you obviously just heard. And if that is true, which obviously I don't know 100% myself, but if that is true, 
Blair's even more evil than we already assumed. But now at this point in the story, we actually make our way back to Cruel World Happy Mind, or Madison. Because Madison had now decided to make a video. Obviously, this drama happened a few years ago when she was a much smaller creator. She's a bigger creator now, she has a bigger voice, and she wanted to give more details about the situation without feeling pressured. And without feeling scared that she was a smaller channel and she has to be careful in case Blair, like, turns against her and ruins her career. And now one key detail of this whole drama was the fact that Madison was actually pregnant at the time, and Blair knew this, and obviously that is a very stressful situation in itself, and Blair just didn't care. Blair put me through all of this. You knew I was pregnant, and you still attacked me online. You said mean and hurtful things about me. You did not care if your followers attacked me. What stress that would cause me. And in this video, Madison talks about how she felt at the time. Obviously, she was pregnant. It was already incredibly stressful. She had to try and make sure that her stress levels were at an all-time low. But at the same time, she's got someone who's trying to ruin her career. She was tweeting stuff out like this, saying, I really love doing debunking streams. Basically insinuating that she was going to go on a stream and just try and rip Madison to shreds. She was even sending sending these threatening messages to Madison saying, so I'm going to be defending my statements against your claims publicly. There was no identifying characteristics that it was you. You're the one who decided to say that was me when nothing said it was about you. What Blair is trying to say here is that she didn't mention Madison's name at the beginning, but it was very obvious who she was talking about. F1 who was involved in the situation knew who she was talking about and viewers were going from Blair to send Madison hate. Is there any statement you would like to provide to me before I proceed? I'm not 100% what to even talk out with you since you've decided to make this a public issue. Is there some common ground we can find here? Like yet again, and she's kind of blackmailing her a little bit, saying like, look, we should probably sort this out, otherwise I'm gonna have to make my video, you know, ripping you to pieces. And I mean, just look at this message here. If we can work things out privately, I will not go forward with my stream and subsequent videos. I mean, that is just straight up blackmail at this point, right? If we're not gonna sort it out right now, I will be doing my stream, by the way, and also, there'll be more videos after that. Obviously, Madison is gonna wanna sort it regardless of who she thinks in the right, because she'll be terrified at this point. And much bigger creators talk about how they're gonna make multiple videos going in on you. Like, she's gonna wanna sort it at this point. Now, obviously, they do sort it. We saw Blair's tweets previously saying like, oh, look, we've sorted it now. We're not going to be talking about each other anymore. But the conversation carries on privately. And Blair, who had previously, like, accused Madison of subbotting, actually sends a screenshot of the article of where she, like, apparently found out that Madison was subbotting, which isn't a true accusation, by the way. But this is where she's saying she got it from. And she sends this article. And as we'll hear from Madison right now, she is very curious as to where she got that from or if... She actually did it herself. How did you come across this website with this article about me? That's, That's suspicious. suspicious. How did you find this? Either you're doing way too much research on me, which is creepy, or you have something to do with this article of me existing on this website. I mean, would anyone be surprised if that was the case at this point? Blair also tried pretending that she was being really nice to Madison and give her some advice saying, oh, by the way, I'm looking at your Instagram right now and just want to let you know some of these pictures, you can kind of tell where you live. Like, I know your exact address because of your pictures, which seems quite nice, I guess, right? Trying to look out for Madison's safety. But then she went to Twitter to tweet out that Madison lives in Colorado and even went on to mention it on a live stream. In addition to this, what she did, a Twitch stream. We both found out we both live in Colorado and we live like an hour away from each other. So she was being really nice in the DM saying, look, people might find out the area you live in and then went publicly to tell people the area she lived in. Again, doesn't make sense, but it is Blair we're talking about here. But now back to Oz Media, because like I mentioned earlier, this legal matter does actually end up getting a lot worse. So a little while after the original tweet from Oz Media saying that he got a cease and desist, he ends up tweeting this. I'm still working on my video. However, Blair has taken legal action against me to take my home. I need help with the legal cost and will be providing a full detailed explanation how I'm even in this position within my video. Put in link below to avoid throttling. Now here we have the GoFundMe for Oz Media's legal fees. Another GoFundMe has been made. This is actually two or three that have been made because of Blair. And as we can see here, Oz Media has actually got $45,000 in donations. Again, the amount of donations that these people who were being attacked by Blair are getting should be an indicator to Blair that maybe she's the one in the wrong, but apparently not. And then after that tweet, we did actually get a video going into more details by Oz Media. He does say he's working on a proper video talking about Illuminati, going into a lot more details. He shows a timeline on Premiere Pro that's over three hours long, says this is only half of the video and doesn't show the After Effects compositions. But this video in particular hasn't been released at the time of me recording this. We've just had Oz Media's first video. So he starts off by confirming that Blair is trying to foreclose his home. I want to firmly state that this update is being made with the understanding that there is a likelihood that this will end up in a courtroom. I say this because things have been escalating quite a bit behind the scenes, and the stress has certainly been rising. 
What I can only describe as retaliation from the person who is my ex, former employer, and prior colleague, Blair is in the process of currently foreclosing my home. And the reason why Blair has the power to do this, according to Oz Media, is because she manipulated him financially. She used the fact that they were in a relationship and she was quite a bit older than him. She was 28, he was 20, and she used the power dynamic to put a lot of debt in Oz Media's name because she had bad credit. My naivety caused me to believe her reassurances that I could handle all the financial obligations being dropped onto my shoulders by someone more experienced in life than I was. Why these obligations were placed onto me? At the time, Blair had bad credit. So all of the purchases, loans, everything was being placed in my name. And Oz Media says that this would actually result in him crumbling financially. And he would have to go to Blair for help because she earned a lot more money than he did. The financial responsibilities that I incurred would stack up on me, building a mountain of monthly debt that would lead me into several financially tight months and eventually just breaking. This would lead me to asking Blair, my partner for financial help. Financial help for things such as my home, which she was living in. Help from my partner, who at any given time would be making up to 30 times my monthly income. And according to Oz Media, she would continuously use this against him. In fact, tell her friends, his friends, anybody else, Discord members and whatnot, that Oz Media is struggling financially, just kind of trying to like embarrass him almost. That number ballooned higher and higher, the number ever increasing, and I never questioned it out of guilt for needing help. Guilt from her telling everyone, from her friends, to my friends, to her employees, to hell, even her Discord staff, about my finances, oftentimes unprompted. Guilt involving the fact that everyone I interacted with on a day-to-day -day basis looked down on me for her words towards me. My own partner, the person who was supposed to be my other half, was actively putting me in a position where she was chipping away at my mental health. And now at this point, Oz Media had to pay back the debt, so Blair actually worked with a lawyer to create a very confusing legal letter that would actually result in Oz Media paying Blair back. Which seems all fine and dandy, but he actually had to pay back pretty much his whole monthly income every month, meaning he wouldn't have enough money to actually survive, meaning he wouldn't be able to keep up with the payments. When I was 23 and Blair was nearly 31, Blair, with her lawyer, would create an honestly quite confusing legal document for me to sign where I would agree to pay back her debt. Blair, being the person who signed my checks, knew that I couldn't afford legal representation. Blair also knew that the two and a half thousand dollars that she was having me pay monthly towards that debt was almost as much as I was making monthly working for her. This would mean that I could barely pay for anything else in my life other than the debt that I owed her. Everything I made working for her was going right back into her pocket. And because Oz Media couldn't keep up the payments, Blair has the power to foreclose his home, or at least she feels like she does, and now that Oz Media's speaking out against her, she thought, fuck it, I'm gonna make you homeless. Blair used all of this, promises of reconciliation and other factors, which will soon be further elaborated on, as means to get me to sign a document known as a deed of trust. I wasn't aware of the power that this document held, what it does, what it allowed her to do. Again, I couldn't afford legal representation. She knew this. This document gave her the power to foreclose if I was unable to make a monthly payment of nearly $2,500 for nearly a decade. Blair knew that even with my income working for her, that this wasn't possible. So, it feels as though she knew that I would be destined to fall behind, that this outcome was inevitable. Now, that doesn't show the type of person that Blair is. I don't know what will. The fact that she is willing to make someone homeless because they don't get along anymore and they're talking about each other in YouTube videos is genuinely insane. And when you put that on top of every other bit of detail that we've covered in today's video, I mean, it's very hard to defend Blair, isn't it? And at this point, Blair just isn't responding. I imagine it's because she knows she's in the wrong. There's not really much she can say, but she's not saying anything publicly after saying that she would. And in fact, she's just going over to Discord to talk with like viewers and whatnot and chat shit about other people in messages that she, I assume, hoped would stay private, but they didn't because YouTubers and other people were gaining access to the Discord account and they found these messages and leaked them. We've got messages like this one here where Blair is talking shit about her sister and saying like she's not very good as an employee and says that even her mum has said that she should fire her, just information that doesn't need to be on a Discord server. And even goes into more details about like potential like insurance fraud of her sister, just again, just private information that doesn't need to be out there. After Oz Media released his video and started speaking out against Blair, she was going over the Discord just claiming that Oz was just a, a bitter ex and this is the reason why he's doing all this. She says that his claims are incorrect and claiming I committed him embezzlement and have a thing for younger guys despite the fact that he's the only person I ever dated that was younger than me. The reason why the whole younger thing is so important here is not 
not because people are trying to say that Osmedia was a minor. He wasn't. He was 20. But it's the fact that 20 and 28 is a big gap, especially when it comes to, like, a power imbalance, right? When it comes to financial responsibilities, the 28-year-old should have a lot more experience with that than a 20-year-old. Meaning the 20-year-old is more likely to listen to the 28-year-old when it comes to financial advice. Meaning it's very easy for the 28-year-old to manipulate the 20-year-old and get them in a bad financial situation, like putting their debt into his name. But just to finish off this video, I'll reiterate the newest piece of information that I did say in my last video, but... Just to give it a full house, we've got the third potential lawsuit here. From Blair to Felix the Kit Kat, who's her ex-employee. Felix is the person that Blair offered to pay $200 to go through raw footage and try and find a video of the click saying a slur. And he came forward with this information, told the click about it. And now she's trying to sue him too. She's just trying to sue anyone she can at this point. And as we can see here, there's also GoFundMe for this. It's up to $1,200 right now. This is obviously a much newer situation. It's just the past couple of days. But it looks like Blair isn't going to take any accountability because still to this day, she is trying to sue sue people and ruin people's lives due to them just speaking out after she said that she will not be silenced which again is incredibly ironic. Yeah, that is all the information that we actually have on the Blair situation at this point. I didn't realize there was so much before recording this video, I can't lie. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you kind of forget about the early stuff that happened because there's so much to remember. You just kind of had to forget, or at least I did anyways. And when I was planning this video, I was like, fucking hell, there's actually so much information to do with this uh, situation, and yeah, I mean, it's just not a good look for Illuminati by any means, is it? But either way, that's all the information we have up to now. I would love to know your thoughts on everything that we spoke about in today's video. As I mentioned as well, I'm going to leave the poll in the description. If you want to go over and vote for what the next topic is going to be, it's looking like it's going to be really close. Obviously, it's a fresh poll now, so maybe it won't be, but make your vote count, whichever one you want, that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, if you are new, subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff, and until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit, all right? Goodbye.